Gabon has been Central Africa's most prosperous and stable country for much of its independent history, but this is changing due to dwindling oil reserves. The country must find new ways of not only encouraging investment and exploration, but in developing other economic sectors as well. Let's take a look. Gabon is faced with declining oil production, which has been the backbone of its economy since it gained its independence. The country is now faced with a twofold challenge to create a diverse economic environment which will rely on the development of natural resources, as well as integrating the unemployed youth into the working economy. Gabon has to diversify its economy and not be so dependent on a few commodities. Uh, that's also important for another reason, which is employment. Uh, we have 1.5 million people in Gabon and a large number of young people entering the labor force and the oil sector is not going to generate jobs by itself. Gabon is endowed with 22 million hectares of rainforest, 1 million hectares of exploitable arable land and 13 national parks which will allow for the significant development of the timber, agriculture and high-end tourism sectors. Forestry is the main private sector employer in Gabon and has created 30,000 jobs, but with more than 60% of forested logs that were being exported without any processing, President Bongo has implemented reforms that are now focused on beneficiation. Multinational companies are queuing up to do business in Gabon and they are drawn by the attractive incentives the Gabonese government is putting on the table. Timber companies that are investing in the special economic zones enjoy a 10-year exemption from corporate tax and another five years at a 10% tax rate. Companies will pay no custom duties for 25 years for imported materials and the export of manufactured goods. This will also include a 25-year VAT exemption and a 50% discount on electricity costs. Gabon aspires to become an emerging country by 2035, and to achieve this, the country will need to have regulatory policies that support and foster economic and social development. I mean, Africa is now being perceived in many areas around the globe as the new land of opportunity. I think it's because there's great demographics, it's a very young population, and you have a lot of governments that are now becoming more open, uh, more democratic, um, and so there's a real opportunity to, to, uh, to grow. Well, still with me in studio is Abel Mayberg, head of the Africa desk at BDO, Sven Richter, head of Frontier Markets at Renaissance Capital, and from our bureau in Gabon, Sanjay Day, country director of Abhijit, joins our conversation as well. Gentlemen, we were chatting during the break and uh, just taking a look at, you know, with all this opportunity that seems so abundant in a country like Gabon, why, uh, you know, we've got participation from sub-Saharan Africa investors lagging that of the kind of investment we're seeing come through from China, from India. What's possibly acting as a deterrent here? Well, I think traditionally Gabon has been very much in the French-speaking influence and they've had lots of relationships with France and the other French-speaking sub-Saharan countries and not so much with sort of English-speaking countries. When I say English-speaking, you know, even people from Germany tend to do business in, in English. So, you know, maybe that's where people from English-speaking business countries have not yet really seen the opportunity and got excited about it, but India and China are leading the way. Mm -hmm. Sanjay, uh, let's uh, take a look at some of the challenges that you may experience on that end, because some say it's the fact that investment is most suitable within the mining sector and that alone. There are constraints to the non-extractive industries that are not so easy to overcome, that being a small domestic market, limited and deteriorating infrastructure, high production costs, a rigid labor market. What are some of the challenges you experience in terms of doing business on that end? Well, of course, if I have to talk about challenges of being uh, doing business in Gabon, of uh, you know, belonging to uh, uh, generally an English-speaking uh, territory, the first uh, challenge that we face is, of course, language, and uh, language is a bit uh, can be a big deterrent factor when you are down here on the ground because, uh, well, you have to learn it because that's the most commonly spoken language, and uh, that's one of the challenges. The second thing is that the, the, the infrastructure relating to in information technology. Now this is a big uh, area where uh, you know, something reasonably good has to be done in terms of doing business in Gabon. Uh, the internet infrastructure, the uh, availability of public information over the internet and the ease of communication. This is simply one of those, uh, you know, one of those big challenges as you know that you know, today's business is dependent on 
fast communication and we have been used to that for quite some time now this is one of the big, big you know big challenges that we face uh, the third possible thing uh, that i have faced over here is that that gabon the people it, <clears throat> largely they're trying to try to adjust themselves to the new culture uh, we come in from a different territory with a different uh, kind of a work culture and we have to mend our ways in accordance to get adjusted with the local population and at the some, same time there has to be some initiative of the local population also to ramp up their capacities and their skills to bring it up to that level now this definitely is one of the you know one of the one of the things which i have faced over a period of time and i think uh, i have seen uh, you know having stayed over here for almost one and a half year i have seen large uh, you know uh, you know big steps and very uh, reasonable developments which i have seen in the attitude of the people uh, you know these are some of the challenges and then uh, the you know because largely of the uh, infrastructure relating to the information technology the operation of the banking the banking operation is quite complicated and it can be quite slow at times and therefore these are these you know this is one of those important areas where really the banking sector has to come up in order to uh, you know bring it up uh, to the uh, world class level these are these are these are a few of the challenges that we you know face in Gabon absolutely but able you know that bringing us then to the discussion on diversification of an opportunity where you've got these gaps that present themselves whether it be within the financial services sector or the ICT space surely this then opens up opportunity for investors in those sectors specifically no definitely I mean it's uh it's quite clear from, from some of the activities that we have facilitated into Gabon as well, you know, from India in terms of te telecommunications, IT, um, linking up with, with the optic cable that's, mm -hmm. that's available, you know, in, in terms of speeding up the, the in, in internet facilities. And obviously um, one of the other areas as well is, is looking at, at your middle class Africans, because that, that's a development in Africa that, that's quite uh, almost running under the radar at the moment, but uh, what goes with that is all your demand for commodities uh, increasing of cities in you know, the size which which Gabon will definitely also be part of uh, and it all links in with uh, going back to in, uh, employment interesting we talked earlier about the incentives uh, one of the incentives that's given now is is a 20 percent deduction on on um, your cost of labor if you bring in new employees into Gabon as a company mm -hmm. so there's a clear indication that the government is really pushing the unemployment uh, uh, problems that they've got at the moment. In fact, a lot of the steps that government is taking, Sven, is being labelled as a statement of intent. I mean, we spoke, uh, uh, you know, in that insert about uh, beneficiation within various yes. industries, and uh, uh, that seems to be happening in the forestry space uh, uh, quite aggressively. President Bongo having uh, banned all unprocessed log exports in uh, in January 2010. Sixty percent were at that stage being exported. Uh, you know, with out processing and many saying that a statement of intent in itself yes I think it is it's, it's a phenomenal statement of intent um, there are issues they still need to deal with I mean the, the 3g system is pretty much non-existent so until you have that you can't really have banking going to everyone there because obviously 1.5 million people they spread out quite a lot where the branch is going to be but the going back a little bit more to the to the to login issue yes that is all a statement of intent and it's 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 sometimes when someone is in very much control of a country in terms of a politician who's very much in control they can make very quick decisions like that which when they're the right decisions can work out very well so on the one hand you have a bit of a political risk on the one hand you have a political opportunity because those things happen and possibly a hidden gem in uh, the I, uh, ict space is that gabon is one of only two countries in the central african region which possesses a connection to the wasc sat3 through a c cable link uh, to europe to asia by skirting africa and that makes communication 10 times cheaper than using satellite. Exactly. So I mean, if you now and you have your statement of intent, you put education in place, you can move all sorts of outsourcing to Gabon, which at the moment they can't do because they need more education. But but the opportunity is there, and the goals are there because what by 2035 they want to be an emerging market. They don't really have a choice but to get to those goals because oil is going to run out, and they have all these opportunities facing them. I mean, even for the manganese. They are very well positioned to export to Europe because they they they're quite close to Europe. So there's a lot of opportunities that I think is facing them, but there has to be that that follow through from the statement to the actuality. That's exactly it. I mean, Abel, we've had Sven highlight there and reiterate what was said in the insert, where uh, the country is uh, has the target of reaching a developing nation status by 2025. 
are those viable targets that have been set? Because, you know, often you have uh, these targets that have been set and uh, they're unattainable. And sometimes that can act as, uh, you know, a demotivating factor. Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, what, what we've seen as well in the past of some of the other African countries has been the downfall of certain, certain countries in terms of uh, um, fulfilling that role or the, or the, the promises that, that were made. Uh, but I've, from my point of view, is that what I feel is that, that um, there's a responsibility on both sides, you know, the responsibility on the t part of the government and on your investors and current businessmen in Gabon itself. Uh, so, so we're always qu quick to blame, but uh, <laughs> we need to look at ourselves as well sometimes. What is the intent of, of the company there? Are they there to sustain or just to have a, a, a quick profit and then move out of the, of, of the country again to, to a neighboring country, for instance? Yeah. yeah. Well, Sanjay, we've touched on a few key sectors here. I mean, obviously, uh, mining, the mining sector stands, uh, you know, at the forefront. And then uh, we talk about a diversification into forestry, uh, into banking, into ICT as well. What about tourism? And I've got to ask you the question because you've got the eyes of a foreigner in the country. I mean, what kind of tourism potential are we looking at on that end? Well, <clears throat> well I've traveled across the country, you know, use the, uh, use the, uh, the highways, uh, and I think, I think uh, this is a beautiful place, and tourism definitely can play a very large role in terms of the economic development. Now, what we have to understand one thing, that uh, this is a country of uh, a population of 1.5 million, and therefore there is always a question on the type of industry that should be developed in this country. If we are looking at FMCG industries coming up in this territory, I don't think it would be a very you know, sensible idea uh, unless you consider the uh, complete West African CMEC region as a single market. So therefore I think the tourism, sec tourism sector in the service sector, there is a huge potential uh, to develop and integrate those far off places. And as you know that this is one of the largest piece of uh, you know, existing uh, rainforest in the world. So therefore, uh, absolutely without a doubt, I can say that the, you know, tourism has got a huge potential and can be developed over a period of time. Well, a good place to leave the conversation for today. Thanks so much, Sanjay, for joining us uh, from Libreville, Gabon. And thanks to my guests in studio as well, Sven, Abel, a pleasure chatting to you uh, this afternoon. That's all we have time for, for this edition of Invest Africa. Africa. We'll be back again at the same time next week. Until then, from me, Alicia Seckham, it's goodbye.